I think it's funny that I'm here speaking today because as a child, I struggled with speech and reading. I felt like an outcast in school because during recess, I would be the only student inside practicing my speech and pronunciation. My speech impediment made me a quiet kid, so I ended up spending a lot more time alone because of it. My communication and comprehension skills weren't as great as other kids, so most of my time was dedicated to doodling and sketching in my notepad. I began to realize the more that I create in my notepad, the more that other kids started to gravitate towards me. They started to ask me questions about my art, and sometimes they even asked me to share my art. Art became my chosen language, and until this day, it's the language I feel most comfortable and proficient in speaking. I believe we all struggle with expressing ourselves at some point. I'm here to talk to you about an idea called Roots and Petals. Roots and Petals is an idea of changing my way of seeing and speaking. And if you don't mind, I'd like to share with you three stories of people who are part of my roots and how my art about them became part of my petals. Later, I would like to present you all with a gift. <laughs> now, fast forward to my high school years. I become a loud and arguably annoying kid. Sometimes you could get me to shut up. <laughs> I didn't excel academically in school, but I always had this dream of being in the AP art class, just to feel smart or validated. Somehow I ended up in AP art class, and I never thought that I would make it out alive. I actually felt like I bit off a little bit more than I could chew. <laughs> Instead of working hard, the thought was daunting. I slacked off and didn't try at all. My AP art teacher, Mr. Johnson, he was not fond of my minimal effort approach. He explained to me how I'm wasting my own time and talent. And to build up some enthusiasm and inspiration, he proposed that I create a piece based on my own narrative. It was one of the first times I felt as if my teacher had believed in my talent and encouraged me to self-reflect. Mr. Johnson saw my true potential, so I wanted to show him that I could complete the project. I ended up making a work using wood and fire. And that, that year, I won multiple Blessed the Show Awards because of the meaning and the intention behind the piece. A student at one of the shows even stopped to share their story with me because they felt as if they could relate to the piece. And that moment has stuck with me since then. Mr. Johnson helped me validate art as a genuine language, one that can help tell honest histories and forge meaningful connections. This was the first time in my life I realized that my art could help other people feel seen and validated. A year later, I'm attending my first year of college. At this time, St. Louis was in riots and protests because of the Mike Brown verdict. And somehow I found myself in the middle of it all. I remember hearing a talk at my college by a local artist historian named DeGeneo Jones. He spoke about the importance of telling honest his narratives and creative documentation. His idea of documentation was intriguing to me. He spoke about the unreliable mainstream media and how they inaccurately capture our stories and try to be our voice. He spoke about the importance of identity, legacy, and future. Maybe as I'm saying this, you're thinking about a time that you felt misunderstood or misbetrayed. Too often we let outside forces write our stories, define our lives, and edit us into people that we are not. This talk made me realize that my art serves a greater purpose. I began to understand that my art is my own creative documentation. It tells my history, shares my story, and speaks truth to my identity. We have to find a way to honor our roots and nurture our roots so that we can share and connect through our own stories. And in 2018, I was able to do that with a group called Black Sheep. The group included awesome entrepreneurs, business owners, Pixar members, and musicians. The tour was to find and celebrate unique people that had a unique way of collaborating with their community. Every project was unique to every individual's gift. But the common thing that everybody had was a sense of connection and community growth. I was one of the youngest on the tour, and one of the only visual artists. I was incredibly grateful for the opportunity, but I'll be lying if I say that I wasn't confused and nervous <laughs> on the tour. I was confused on why I was there. 
I was able to connect with maker shops, kids, scientists, business owners. And in the midst of connecting with all of these individuals and hearing their stories, I realized my reason for being there on the tour, hearing others' histories and witnessing all of the good changes happening in the communities inspired me to use my art as a platform for others to tell their story. Now that I have witnessed Mr. Johnson, Deidre Nero Jones, Black Sheep create connections in, through their community, I wanted to adopt the same ideas that they had through my own work. I realized that art is more than my language. It is a form of creative documentation. It is a form of history telling. It is a mean, means of connection. So I started a series dedicated to honoring our roots. This series celebrates history that, that is told through family photos. The, the family photos are recreated, and after family photos are recreated through, the, through paint or other mediums, you'll be able, those people will be able to point out who and what is in those photos. It'll be real stories from real people in creative environments. I'd like everyone to learn about their neighbor, learn about your employees, Learn about your classmates and your teachers, too. <laughs> Maybe find a new way of sharing and connecting. Maybe cook their favorite traditional meal and share it with them. Maybe it's an object that has meaning. I'm sure a conversation will spark somehow. But most importantly, find more appreciation in people's identity, culture, and history. Appreciate their roots. That is where you will find your petals, and that is where your petals will grow. What legacy will you pass on? You don't have to paint to tell a story, nor do you have to speak. I don't like doing it. <laughs> Same with learning. Throughout your time of documentation, see your petals flourish. Petals, preserving history, culture, and sharing legacies with others. Roots and petals. Wait, one more thing. As I said, I have a gift for you all. Just not for, not, for, not for Marshall, but everybody. <laughs> Actually, I want you all on here to hold it with me. This painting is a painting that represents the bus that we took uh, on the tour. And the first stop was actually here in West Virginia, where I met Brian and, and Ben. And it is the reason why I'm here today. And I just want to say thank you all, and I really appreciate you all for the opportunity and letting me speak and share, share with you all. Thank you all so much for letting me share.